Um, I read one sentence in, in your book and in your essay about Gia, uh, where you describe his relationship with reality as intelligent because he does not try to impose a, a pre-established moral vision onto it. And he, um, he lets reality speak to the film. I was thinking that um, precise, you were using perhaps that kind of method in terms of editing this film, because you're trying to anchor his film in reality uh, by showing a scene, then showing where it was shot, constantly bringing it back to the real. And if the real is not there anymore, then you trace back the history behind it. I just wanted to launch this idea. And, and I'm, I'm going to try to reply to the, the several questions in, in the question by um, starting referring to the very first time I I personally met uh, Gia and talked with him, which was at the Marte de São Paulo in uh, 2007. And I asked him, who are the filmmakers who brought you to cinema? And uh, he said, well, um, Antonioni teach me what space was, um, Bresson what time was, and uh, Hu Xiaoxian the importance of everyday's life in, in, and how you, you can relate that to, your, your, to the film. And um, in selecting the shots, but also in conceptualizing the documentary, I had that in mind as well, and, and um, I thought at the beginning to work with the different layers of memory. Um, first, knowing that his own memories had somehow um, allowed films like Platform to exist or Show Who to exist, to go back to the, to the people who were part of that, that is, his sister, who is at the basis of platform, but all his friends that he kept up to this day and celebrate him every time he goes to Fenyang. Mm -hmm. um, and blend that with, with the idea of a collective memory, which is the memory of a country in urgent transformation. And maybe there is no country whose identity has changed or altered so rapidly um, in the last 10 years in China, and Xie Zhengke was the filmmaker that managed somehow to relay that on film. And then, last but not least, um, try to bring out a, a, a third layer, which is the, the layer of filming itself, that is coming back to the places where he had filmed and see what kind of uh, memories that that would generate to a filmmaker for whom memory is so fundamental. Um, and. This is how the film is constructed, but this is also how we ended up uh, picking up the, you know, the, the the elements of the films that that permeate the, the the documentary. And I'm aware that there are too many of them, completely aware. And I I, I, I go to <laughs> to Jacques say, saying that uh, at, at the end you 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 have to allow for imprecisions and imperfections to be in the film. That is one of the imperfections of the documentary itself, because there are too many clips, but there are too many moments of Gilles Jean films that I also love. And it was very hard to get to, to actually let go of them. Um, and th there may be a reason for that. And it, it, if I... Um, Mention a line by uh, Borges, Jorge Luis Borges, the Argentinian writer, used to say that his interest in um, in literature was to name what hadn't been named yet, and I find it very difficult to do today in cinema because of, of the multiplicity of images that that bombard us all the time. Yet, when I see G.S. films, I have the impression that something has been named, you see. And so I, I try to uh, actually grasp those moments where I had the impression that, um, that something had been architectured and, and constructed, and yet I, I, don't, I didn't know of it, and bring them in, into the film. Mm -hmm. um, going back to the last part of your question, 
I'm absolutely in awe with the fact that he is able to rebound constantly. So, um, you see, he's the, the fact that the, the very end that he asked, what, what if uh, the characters of Platform come back today and see what has happened into the world, you know, mm -hmm. the other film, how would they respond to that, that ample universe that they had dreamed of being mm -hmm. locked, you know, and how, how, so he's constantly reconsidering and asking uh, himself what, you know, what, what the world um, could be. And that I find um, astonishing, even when he's talking about his father, which I, there was no question asked, he, he braced that to us, he, he suddenly started to talk about his family past, and that, which I had no idea of, except that platform was dedicated to his father. At the end he says, maybe that's what a son and... A and relationship and with his... Maybe that is, it's not that's what... Mm. Even the title of his new film is, it's, uh, uh, which is in Cannes now, uh, based on the platform uh, films. It's not mountains will depart, it mountains may depart. Mm -hmm. So this capacity to always uh, relativizar, how do you say that? Uh, relativize to, to, to relativize things is something that uh, one has to be in awe with. And mm -hmm. I, I also think that this generates the fact that even when he's doing documentaries, he, 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 reb, he rebels against the documentary form and he brings in, uh, for instance, 24 cities, mm -hmm. fictional elements, yeah. which is very akin to Eduardo's... Uh, 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 playing uh, in English, uh, Jogo de Cena. Jogo de Cena, Eduardo Coutinho's film. And, and again, when he does Still Life, which is uh, anchored in very realistic... Um, you know, story, he integrates elements, surrealist elements, mm -hmm. yet that reality was already so surrealist that it allows for buildings to explode or to take flight. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you see, there is some, there's, there's an inner freedom in him that starts from the a complete understanding of, of uh, what that is about. And it, it, it's a very powerful um, uh, in, construction that somehow uh, ingravida, how do you say that? Uh, Impregnate. Impregnates the film as a whole, you know, in such a way that um, I have the impression that one scene uh, uh, echoes in the next scene and in the next scene and in the next scene and in the next scene, which makes it very hard to pick one, one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> because they are all interdependent and that's the strength of, of, of his films. They are, they are all there for a, a reason. You mm. see. But uh, what I find also astonishing is the echo of these films with your films and attitude to reality, your posture towards reality. Um, I can see that your choice, although it was hard, mm -hmm. it had a point. Uh, you could have left out the... the um, the, the, the whole story about the father, but yeah. you put it in a very prominent place in the film, a kind of climactic right. scene where he becomes <laughs> fearful about it and the camera carries on rolling and you let it roll and, and um, you didn't cut it at, at, in the final cuts of the film. And we know the, the key role that the absent father has in mm -hmm. your filmography as a whole and the kind of centrality of father figures in, in, in your approach to storytelling. So if, could you elaborate a little bit about that? Yes. Hmm. I think that the, the um, absence of, of the father is, a, is a, um, how would you say, is a, a routine um, do you say that in English? Um, the, the absence of the father, uh, constitutivo, how do you say constitutivo? It's constitutive. It's constitutive of a, a national um, identity in Brazil. Um, we were um, created or named uh, or invaded, whatever the word you want to use, um, 
by um, a colonial power who went, um, named the film Brazil, took out whatever uh, tree was called Brazil. Uh, so oh, the, the, father, the father came and left. Um, and it's amazing in documentaries, we were talking about Cochino's last documentary, the number of uh, people who come in and say, I don't know my father, um, I've, I've been raised by my mother. The, the, the absence of the father is uh, of, of, of the constant echo in the stories you hear or you, you, or you um, um, read about in, in Brazil. I'm not sure that it, that, that is what made the link to, to um, G.S. talking about his own father because I was actually pretty much in doubt if I was to leave it or not because for um, going back to that one day we, we were uh, starting to shoot and, and that came about mm -hmm. and I, I actually, uh, the silence is due to the fact that I decided not to continue to ask questions. You know, it's just mm -hmm. a ban, and we we um, we that day was that was it. You know, mm -hmm. that that uh, be, uh, anything that would come after that would have been, um, I would say, would would have somehow abused of that moment of sorts. I, I felt like, okay, this 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 is it, and let's see afterwards what 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 I will make of it. I was getting. Um, the translation um, done at the, how do you say that, uh, the simultaneous. Simu simultaneous translation, but at that time also the translator was so moved that he couldn't continue. Mm. So I just had a part of it. It's a little bit, the second, the second moment where that occurred was in the, the coffee shop because as we got there, the, 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 <laughs> that was the, our last day of shoot over there and it was about it's, it was about celebrating his next shoot, and when we get there, that situation in front of us was everything but, of course, the possibility of doing a film. And the, the, uh, his personal assistant has, hadn't arrived, so I didn't have the translation. Mm -hmm. And I, I stood there for a while, and we were a crew of three, so we were very, very few people. And I, I actually, after... 15 or 20 minutes, allowing them some time. I asked them whether, whether um, that should be shot or not, understanding that something had occurred. Mm -hmm. And he says, yes, please shoot, because that's part of what we're doing. That's when he learns that um, his film has been... Yes, to, that like, occurred on that day, yeah. which was the last day we were shooting. Mm -hmm. And how, how many filmmakers uh, uh, would have asked us not to shoot during that day, mm -hmm. you know? That tells a lot about his own, um, uh, his own um, bravery and commitment. Well, no, his own commitment to um, some something that is a truly the reflection of, of what is bouncing at that very moment. You know what it, what he was feeling at that moment, and somehow it nourished the the, the film as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I'm, I'm also very much um, in admiration of the fact that somebody who can tell us that, uh, who blended, you know, elements of, of uh, uh, the classic and, and pop and, um, you know, who who, uh, as we, we said grammatically, also blended very uh, uh, <coughs> different narrative um, um, styles, is always there reconsidering what would can come less, uh, what, what can come next, uh, to the point where he, uh, I like it when he says, um, when pop music came, it was not about the we anymore. It was about the I. Yet, a little bit later, he says, "Look at what happened with the I. Mm. Look at look at what happened with the market mm. economy in this country, it, and the violence becoming a possible discourse as mm -hmm. a result of that." 
So it's he's rebounding again and again and again, and that, it's it's quite unique to see a mind doing that. You know. Um, you um, um, just to pick up on that question of the we as opposed to I. Yes. Um, uh, if we could relate that to authorship and the fact that you say, I love all GS films, but I wouldn't say the same about many other filmmakers whose mm -hmm. films I like, but mm -hmm. not all of them, but I like all GS films. Um, I was thinking about that leading us towards that vision of the auteur that um, who's um, who is always behind the films, and you feel the person and the signature uh, behind or inscribed on the images and sounds that we hear. And um, thinking about him, but also thinking about your work, whether you see that your kind of authorship um, uh, shares the kind of uh, authorial signature that you encounter in No, I, I, I don't really think it does. Also, be, because um, I, th I think that Jia has a, a much more precise understanding, both in fiction and in documentary, of um, what interests him at that specific moment. And I think that he has, again, the ability to... The same man who's capable to say, well, the person who brought me to... The, per, the, the filmmakers who brought me to cinema are Antonioni, because he made me understand about time, and Bresson, uh, about space, and Bresson, who made me understand about time. This is the guy who is able to do a film about the implosion of space and time, mm. which is the mm. world. Mm. You see, I... I I don't think I would have that capacity to reach that kind of synthesis to start with. Mm -hmm. But but uh, more than that is it, two years later it's you, you know he rebounds on still life which is something that I find extremely difficult to do as well. So, uh, uh, he takes um, an uh, an event that has been reproduced 150,000 times and manages to re uh, narrate or to create a new discourse based on something that has been, uh, uh, you know, like an orange that has been pressed too many times, and he's able to find something fresh and a new, starting from the same, mm -hmm. the same press. I, I I find that quite uh, quite unique, in, it, quite unique in cinema as a whole, I and mean, I I wouldn't be able to name it, to pinpoint uh, another filmmaker who um, would probably be able to say, I love, I, I really, I truly admire all of his films. Mm -hmm. um, Gia, I truly love and admire his films, which is, right. you, you can admire a film without yeah. loving it. Mm. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, I see many I think, <laughs> people agreeing with that. Um, um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just ask one more question and then turn to yeah, the, sure. the, the audience, because I'm sure they are dying to... Um, uh, ask their own questions to you. Um, I feel that constant self-deprecating attitude on your part that the English will recognize very well. Because it's <laughs> too, it's too cool. But uh, one thing that is totally astonishing is your name being kind of hidden and appearing just at the um, final credits um, as a director of this film. Um, other things that I find totally astonishing is that um, uh, Xiao Wu, that you saw for the first time in English, I think there is a, a kind of translation to pick I think it's pick pocket. Yeah. yeah. Although the, uh, Xiao Wu is, is a, a, a proper name, is right. the name of the character. Um, you've seen it, this film during the uh, 1998 Berlin Film Festival when Central Station was being awarded the Golden Bear. And it was uh, uh, Fernanda Montenegro being awarded the Silver Bear for Best Actress. It was the consecration of the new Brazilian cinema. It was uh, something that would entitle you entirely to be completely self-centered and forgetting about everything else. And yet you were 
searching for new ideas and looking for uh, the film by somebody else and becoming so uh, enthralled by it that you decided I want to work about this guy. So I just find that admirable. Uh, the first thing I would say is that, um, you know, maybe, maybe if Gia allows me to say that, you know, when my own, own father, uh, just before my own father passed away, I, st I saw that he started to lose interest in reading, for instance, mm -hmm. or watching films or talking about things. I said, ah, something is going to happen. I think that once you lose interest in the world surrounding you, it's, it's, it's really not a very good sign. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've always had more kind of a... Uh, Brazil cinéphile, what do you say, that cinephilic pleasure, the, almost in doing the films itself, you know. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, Ceylon, who is mm -hmm. uh, Ceylon? Ceylon, yeah. I think. Yeah, Ceylon. Um, right. As being a filmmaker, we both um, admire. I, I love, for instance, a film of his called Uzak, mm -hmm. which is, I think it's called Distant here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, once, a time, once Upon a Time in Anatolia. And mm -hmm. Also, a little bit like Jay Jonquet, I think he's he's one of those filmmakers that s speak about, uh, about our time, perhaps in his uh, case less directly than Gio, maybe his characters. The, um, the, the characters in, in Gio Jonquet's films um, somehow mirror the crisis of the, the Chinese society as a whole. You can, you can find the direct relation, which is a little bit more um, discreet, I would say, or, or indirect in in um, in Ceylon's <coughs> film. But if that happens, it's probably because that Turkish society with with its layers is a, is not as immediately decodable for us. And China, for us, has for us Brazilians has mm -hmm. many many ways in, uh, including the violence, the social mm -hmm. violence that mm -hmm. abounds now. This is something that we've. We we, 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 yeah. we can easily uh, relate to re relate to, but c cinema I think is still on a personal basis. As you're asking the question personally, something that still astonishes me. You know, uh, we we're talking about nostalgia de la luz. Uh, I, f I, f I think the, the sense of wonder. It's very hard to have the sense of wonder, and cinema I think still brings it. This is what allows me to have um, somehow believe that there is a role for cinema before anything else. It's the, the, the possibility of wonder, which I don't get in the iPhone watching 2001 State Odyssey. You know? <laughs> uh, it's, it's that eventually that possibility. Mm. Uh, by the way, can I show those, ima oh, those yes. two images? I brought yeah. two images to, um, the still from, image. from, the, the, from the square. They were taking to, those two images were taken uh, eight years apart. So, this uh, all these people are waiting for uh, one event, and it's the announcement of the new pope. Um, and that was, I, if I'm not mistaken, 2004, 2005. Okay, it's interesting because you see. Um, everybody's concentrated on the announcement itself, and y you actually see three um, I f the three telephones in in the image. There's this one very clearly visible. Then on this man's face, you have the reflection of a telephone there, and there's a third one over there. Okay, now I would like to go to the second image, which has been taken eight years later. <laughs> And this, they're waiting for the announcement to occur, for the new book. So the announcement hasn't come yet. In Vendors, the, the Tokyo, Tokyo guy, that film on Ozu, and at the beginning he's on an airplane and there's a, there's a film going on and he says, I'm not going to watch the film because I will never remember it. Um, and so I, I wonder if 
anyone will ever remember this, you know? Uh, what happened so there? What happened there? So, uh, in, in a world where there's been such a horizontalization of, of uh, uh, images, it's very rare to, um, it's very difficult, I think, to, to be able to do a cinematic um, statement such as Nostalgia de la Luz or, or um, say still life or a platform or um, you know the Ceylon films it, it is hard yet necessary I find cinema today to be more necessary than it was before although um, the unity of time has changed completely although um, as, as a writer once told me there's no more away the away has disappeared When I see a film by Georges Anquet, I have the impression that no, it, it hasn't completely disappeared. Um, mm -hmm. It has been banalized, mm -hmm. but it hasn't disappeared. It's very different. These are two different things altogether, you know. Um, meaning that there, there is, there is um, a possibility to still unveil the world through cinema, which is what brought me to cinema to start with when I hit the crossroad in France. You know, it was about uh, realizing that there, there were worlds I was completely unaware of. Um, but not, I'm not talking about only the physical geography, the human geography as well. And people who lived, you know, so differently than I lived. And that was so enriching in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Jean Quay is one of the few filmmakers who still allowed this to happen, but it, it doesn't mean that 10 other filmmakers would not be able to do this, you know, and you don't need to be um, geographically where he is. I think that there's a, there's what, what makes him so unique is the capacity to conceive. I find it much more difficult to conceive of, of uh, a film today than it was before. Um, I'm, for every two or three screenplays I've worked on in the last years, I normally let two go rapidly because the reality just um, takes, over. takes over, and it, it, what I have been developing up to that moment lost. You know, I suddenly realized that it lost its capacity to to uh, of, ref of true reflection. Of that, you know, it 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 it's um, it's dwarfed by reality. So you somehow have to be. Um, way in advance to be able to again be in synchronicity. It's, it's, it's becoming more difficult to do that. And thus my admiration for those who do this <laughs> has only grown in, you know, in, in, in the past years. Yeah. I think uh, the public has the right to... <laughs> I love the idea of the public. <laughs> ...interrogate you. Uh, Joram, yeah. Just, just a couple of... Um, uh, uh, comments, uh, the, the couple of things just mentioned now. I was reading very recently about this phenomenon of the, of the electronic device and, re and recording of, of, the, of the event. That um, more, more, more than uh, only the, that activity of trying to record the event um, uh, being an obstruction to, to recall in any sense of mm -hmm. memory, it's that it's such an obstruction, obstruction that there's no memory that can form mm -hmm. in the first place. So that it, you know, one can record the event in some way, but it has very little or nothing to do with one's own reflection upon, you know, as a, as a, as a device for memory, because right. because of that device there's no memory being formed in the first place, and so widely speaking, um, there's, there's a, a collective amnesia without, the, because the, the, the memories are not being formed in the first place, and just relating that to, um, to uh, Christian Keithley writes in, in Cinephilia and History about the, the experience of uh, of watching films being embedded within the memory of the experience mm -hmm. and the setting mm -hmm. and the ritualization of, of the dark room and everything and and how how that's uh, so central to to the engagement with with film is the, the context of of, of uh, viewership um, where the memory of the experience of watching that film is is uh, more than just the recollection of the film, so it's the recollection of the experience sure. of engaging with the film. Okay. And finally, uh, I remember watching a Zhe film 
um, in Kalo uh, a few years ago and feeling um, that, that the experience of being with him in an alter, an alter sense that he had right. allowed me to enter into his, his sensibility um, was so uh, was so different to, to the rest of the to the circus right. of a very good you know the wonderful film festival, which is a you know a pleasure to be at a film festival to, to watch. But the experience of watching uh, a jazz film in that setting um, introduced a, um, such a direct engagement with with reality that made everything else feel much less real. Right. Uh, so just a, a collection of random thoughts about um, <laughs> engaging with those films. So, a lot of questions. I agree with that completely. Um, I think this is a comment. Any more questions? We were wondering here about the role of Frodon. Ah, Frodon. Uh, <coughs> Frodon is one of the very early um, Defensors, how do you say that? Defenders. Defenders of uh, Gia's uh, films in, um, in France, first in Le Monde, then as an editor of uh, the Cahier du Cinéma. And um, the, the original idea, um, you know, was to do a book and then a documentary where uh, Léon and Léon Kaka from Marshall de Saint-Paul and I would gather uh, uh, around this, the project and then uh, we soon realized that we had to bring in somebody that Léon wouldn't be able to do the journey and, uh, and um, we both thought of Jean-Michel as uh, a unique uh, traveling companion because of um, his understanding not only of um, Gia's importance, uh, but also of Chinese cinematography, you know, and, and, and how, and how uh, also he, you know, Zhe Zhangke redefined it and collided against, for instance, the fifth generation, the, the Xi'an generation that preceded it. So it, it, the project wouldn't exist Without uh, Jean Michel, he was ex ex extremely important in defining it and, <laughs> and um, organized the book that, that we ended up uh, doing with Cossack Naïf and the Master. It was really, really quite, um, quite a gift to have him on board. Was him at the He was at, at part of the shoot, yes. He arrived at the. Um, last day of Fenyang, but then he stayed with us during um, uh, that train journey. The, in the interview in the train was done by Jean-Michel and then um, um, in the world and also, as you can see, he's part of that, um, that uh, seminar, that masterclass that, that Jia does at, um, mm -hmm. at the CAFA, the school. There's a, there's a story about that actually. Mm -hmm. it's, Three, three days before it happened, he said, you know, I was meant to give a master class at Kaffa, but we never truly scheduled it. And I said, well, it would be great if you schedule it, but we have to leave in seven days. I said, no, no, we'll schedule it in three days. So, so that was as we were heading to, to Beijing. When we arrived in Beijing, the poster was made. Uh, and, and it was that crowd. And that crowd and 3,000 people are waiting outside. Incredible. <laughs> I, said, I said, if that is independent cinema in China, I would love this to be reproduced in Brazil. <laughs> um, he also has um, a Twitter, uh, the, what he calls Weibo, is mm. a form of Twitter in which uh, Jia Zhongke interferes in, in Chinese culture or social political scene and and he posts something there mm. every you know every two or three days and there's a there's a comment his followers. and i said oh, how interesting that you have the time to do this because he also produces first-time directors and uh, you know runs the company as if incredible that you're able to do that work and uh, how many followers you have and um 
Uh, not many, not many yet. I said, well, how many? Uh, 15 million. <laughs> <laughs> so again, that's independent cinema in China. <laughs> you know, this is how we... Yes, please. So I would like to ask you, you mentioned that there, is a, there was a translator yes. uh, while you were making the film. Yes. I wanted to know how it's like to travel through language and make a film in a different language in a context that you might not be so familiar with. Well, first thing, it was very interesting to go to Fenyang and understand that I wasn't the only one in that situation. Because um, in most of his films, what you have is the Shanxi, which is the region dialect. So the, the, the sound engineer was from Beijing and actually spoke French, so we were speaking in French. And I asked him, listen, um, how much of the dialect are you getting? And he said, as much as you are. <laughs> and, and which, which also untapped um, something that I hadn't understood at that point is that uh, Ya Zheng Ke is a filmmaker in between cultures, at the margin of a culture, which allows him to see it from inside and from the outside uh, at, at the very same time. Um, second fact is that his films have to be subtitled in Mandarin if, if they're watched by um, you know, most of the, the population um, or even in other dialects as there are 160 different dialects in China. So you, you, you are confronted to um, a reality that he is confronting constantly as a, as a film director. Um, <coughs> I, as I was you know, fed by the immediate translation that allowed for a constant conversation. And when Frodon came in, he had the, the exact same thing, which, which makes the exchange very fluid and allows you to actually um, be able to almost forget that it exists. You know, that, uh, and also we're talking between with film students today that, uh, 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 something came to my mind is that you're really truly doing cinema when you forget that you're doing cinema. You know, that you're forgetting that the camera's there, that you're forgetting uh, the, the number of elements, that it, it's just life burgeoning in there that you're able to capture. And at a certain moment you forget that the translation is there, uh, as you're forgetting any other sounds that may be rebounding, you know, the echo of something. You're so concentrated on what somebody is uh, doing or, or telling that it, it, it ceases to be, um, you know, what is happening uh, outside this ceases to be important. So rapidly you forget about the translation. I have to say that if this happened, it's because also Jean Ké truly is, is that person that you see there all the time. Um, it's, it is, there's no veal, there's no construction of uh, the, the filmmaker's persona, it's just him, you see? That makes it so much, uh, so enjoyable, truly, you know? Because you're, you, there's, there's, afterwards there's no need to deconstruct anything or to unveil anything. It's, it's, you're always working in a, in a the, the direct form and it becomes pretty, pretty interesting. At the same time, there's a prudeness. There's a, there's, you know, you 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 sense the distance that is a perfect distance that he somehow establishes. It's not only the lens that establishes it; it's himself and how he places himself in the frame. You know, it's very. I think, frankly, it, it, the name it's co-directed by Jiu <laughs> <laughs> But, but let me play the, the devil's advocate just, just, just for a minute so that he's not um, um, just a god. Perhaps he has some, some um, failures here and there, um, <laughs> although it's, it's, it's just a joke. But uh, I was just thinking um, that it's a very male world. Uh, the one that he's portraying there, and the the his close companions. Obviously, there is Zhao Tao, who is yes. 
also his muse, his, his and, muse and, and companion. Yes. And, uh, but we never see the two together. They are interviewed separately. Mm -hmm. um, and um, one thing I noticed when he meets his mother and she comes with the tea, the first thing he does is to complain about the tea. <laughs> it's not brewed enough. Before anything else, you know. You're very sensitive to tea living in England. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so so although he was so dramatic about his father's story, he seems to to be quite <laughs> matter of fact. Yeah. I'll, transmit. Yeah. I'll transmit. I'll transmit. I just wonder what your view is about that. Um, uh, and the thing about drinking, obviously, is entirely male. It's not something that the women do in, in China, not in the same context. Bottoms yes. up all the time. And, yeah. It's true, although Zhao Tao doesn't refuse the Oh, uh, does she do it? Young wine, well. Yes, I have to say. Yeah. Um, I think you would probably say the same thing of most of the Cinema Novo experience. Or, yeah. It's, um, or even we're mentioning, we're mentioning um, Ceylon. I think that you would you would probably say that in many cultures, because that that fight has become a universal one as well. Mm -hmm. right. and that fight for make uh, um, uh, how do you say that? You know, uh, the, uh, uh, gender, gender equality. Gender equality. It has been, it, it's not... Well, so I love the moment it yeah. cuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does as well. And, and I think you would love it as also because it blends high culture and low culture. Because mm -hmm. at, at, you talk yeah, about the impure, uh, impure cinema. Yeah. That, that, that is a, a, a direct translation of that. Because mm -hmm. in the same film... You you have the the reference to um, a nineteenth or eighteenth century opera at one hand, and then yeah. the Vuccia, which is uh, the most popular warriors uh, film, martial arts, martial arts mm -hmm. film, blended into one, which is also I think an extraordinary strength of uh, of uh, Jia Zhongke, how you how, how how you can blend uh, that what is called how high culture and low culture. I don't like this mm. kind of definition, but it's, it, let's, let's say, just for the sake of the discussion. Uh, mm. it is, it's, it, that is a very hard thing uh, mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Um, Timothy? Yeah, um, first of all, thanks. Great film. Um, and I love the clips that you showed from this film. I thought they were fantastic. You know, I have a whole lineup of ones that I really like. But one of them I thought was really powerful in a, an odd way, and I wonder if you could comment on it. Um, it's the one with the, I can't remember which film it's from, where the, the kid's on the motorcycle, and he's going up the hill, and he keeps stalling out on him, and he just holds the shot again and again. Yeah, unknown and, pleasure. Uh, yeah, and, and as you were talking about, you know, this, you know, the, the heritage of Bresson, um, the kind of openness of all of his films, this question of naming. Um, I just wonder if you could comment on that. That one blends uh, Bresson and Antonioni in the same, the yeah, same one, isn't it? Because it's treacherous time, and at the same time, it inserts the character in a, sp the, the, the character in a very specific geography that now you have the time to, to completely apprehend. And th what is interesting about that shot is that he says um, it, is a, it contains very personal emotions, but I would say that it contains also very, a, a very personal understanding that's the, of cinema beyond what, what, what the visible is. Um, exactly, yeah. And, and um, if we accept, for instance, uh, Kieslowski's definition that cinema is about the invisible that complements the visible, then there is something that there to con continuously watch and discover uh, things on the image that do not appear this, the, the, immediately, including in the sound. I don't know if you rem remember that after stalling, I don't know how many times, the motorcycle stops very near camera. And then uh, the guy takes off the engine. He put, puts it off, is that yeah. correct in English? Um, puts it off. And you can, see, you can see that the engine truly halts because the, the motorcycle does this, yet the sound continues. Yeah. He he. The the sound is not realistic at all. It 
it just continues to come um, and, and impregnates the scene until the very end, which I, I find completely extraordinary. I, I realized that after the seventh or eighth time I, well, I, I, thought that I, was I, a, I saw the film. I so, thought that was a fault in the motorbike. The, no, it's not. The motorbike popping. really stalls, and he, he, he uh, opted for the sound well, to continue. It's, it's as if... It's give, unscripted, correct? It's unscripted. Yeah. It's as, as if uh, giving life to um, the tiger, you know, suddenly in a realistic film, um, uh, yeah. you, the, the, the camera pans to the tiger and then you have yeah. thing. It's, it's, it's a non, obviously non-realistic um, approach to a, a realistic scene. And that, that again is his strength. It's, it, that the, the 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 inner freedom of of the cinematic construction is to be uh, a tr truly um, um, pinpointed because it's quite unusual, you know, mm -hmm. and you you see that working all the time. And, and it did, I, I did feel like it crystallized a lot of the things you were saying about you know, his larger perspective too. That yeah. one little shot. Yeah. I also love the previous one where he says, "When everything goes well." Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm very unsatisfied, yeah. uh, which which uh, I think is going to help me a lot when everything is going to go very badly, <laughs> you know, which it normally does. And you said, oh, okay, how great it is. <laughs> but that um, that thing brings me back to the question of performance uh, mixed with um, capturing the the real as it happens. Um, and if we could go back to that case of 24th City right. and playing, right. um, uh, which is the, the Brazilian film, Jogo de Sena, and how, without knowing each other, probably, I don't think that Coutinho ever it, they, was... They were shot and, at the same time. Uh, yeah, so... It would, uh, those uh, two films were shot at the same time. And uh, in both films, you have, um, you know, people being interviewed who truly were part of that scene and then actors coming in and playing, um, playing... The same part. Mm. Uh, in Cochino's Is world, the, the exact same mm. part, they're just repeating it. Mm. And um, in, in his own, in his uh, world, uh, in 24 City, the actors mm. come in and they are known actors in China, so they are, uh, they are truly... Um, fictionalizing um, uh, how do you say that? Um, statements statements oh, oh. That, that, that had been truly made by those by, by, by those people who passed away mm -hmm. um, and uh, you see this the, the, uh, what matters there is, is not truth anymore it's the, the truth of representation mm -hmm. truly it's 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 a it, it it's about redefining what the truth of representation is, you know. And it um, was also mentioning early early on that Godard, who has a good set sentence for almost everything in cinema, <laughs> yeah, he says that that the the good fiction films drift for him towards documentaries, and good documentaries drift towards fiction, fiction films mm. and. In uh, both Cochino and Gia Jeanquet, you, you, and especially in those two examples that you mentioned, you, you can truly sense that. Mm -hmm. The intertwining of uh, those, those, those two, those two uh, different narrative forms, you know, that are as old almost as cinema, because if you go back to Men of Aaron, uh, the the discussion was already a very heated yeah. one. Yes. You know. yes. 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 Any more questions? Yes, please. Um, you said before how cinema has been a um, liberating experience for you. Um, how would you... It was many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, I mean, for, for the, for the documentary. Um, how would you compare this um, liberating process between being just an observer of a film or, and being a crafter, like someone who actually makes a film. Right. And that's a, it, 
No, it's, it's, it's an interesting question because I don't think that the perspective can actually uh, be the same if you're doing a documentary or if you're doing a, a, f a fiction film. Um, I am uh, totally against uh, having sedimentada, uh, how do you say that, a sedimented mm -hmm. uh, structure um, or architecture before you start doing your documentary but completely for um, the perception that without a central idea that can rebound constantly <coughs> in what you were doing, in what you were going to do, it would be uh, an erratic exercise to, to do that documentary. So uh, in, this is what we were talking about, the different layers of memory that interested me to start with before doing, doing the film. In, in fiction, what I try to do is start with something way more rigorous structurally so that I can truly betray the structure later. Um, in the sense that it's, um, it, it has a little bit, it's a little bit like jazz. If, if, if you know the, 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 the core the, the, or the melody, to talk about melody and jazz doesn't make much sense, but if, if you know the central um, route, you can, it's easier to bifurcate from it because you can find it again a little bit later. Um, so, for instance, in Motorcycle Diaries, we have, in Cusco and Machu Picchu, we have 12 minutes of improvisation, and, but that, it was only possible to improvise because the, the, the actors had um, worked so much on, on the characters that they were able to improvise in the logic of the characters. You see, so, so that is the difference and if if that if those uh, rules are are set then then it can be a liberating experience to work within them it's it's as if you need the limit in order to find the the, the liberation within it mm. you know if you if you know the screenplay truly well that is the limit and if you have developed it uh, uh, you know, well enough, you can always drift away from it mm. and, and, and try different things in different takes because you know already what you have, you know. Thank you. Um, in connection with that, um, I notice also that you love to work in a team. Um, you've collaborated with a number of people here again with Michel Fredon, Jean-Michel Fredon, but also other people. Um, you collaborated many times with Daniela Thomas um, as a co-director, co-script writer. Um, I think that there are three or four script writers in Central Station. Mm -hmm. So you tend to attract people to come and work mm -hmm. with you. So, um, Well, first I like the collectiveness of it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I also like the fact that if we know each other a little bit better, it's easier to continue, um, you know, in, in, in trying to find new paths to actually look at it with the same, with the same, um, you know, people who have somehow helped you to construct, uh, you know, what you have done <coughs> before. There's a, there's a, there's a um, truly interesting, um, interview done by um, a French journalist called uh, uh, Rui Noguera uh, with uh, Jean-Pierre Melville who mm -hmm. did The Samurai and many mm -hmm. other films and who influenced The Nouvelle Vague. Mm -hmm. um, he's also a character in, uh, in uh, Godard's uh, A bout de souffle. Mm -hmm. He plays yeah. the, the philosophy professor. The, yeah. and, and, who uh, Nogueira asks, um, asks him at the beginning of the book, he said, uh, if, if you were to um, tell me what is the most important uh, element of a film, what would you say in construction of film? Um, but say in, per in percentage, in percentiles or in percentage? Percentage. In percentage. And he said, ah, oh, interesting question. And he said, well, 
I would say that 50% is the store is the uh, uh, the choice of the story that you want to bring to the screen. 50% is how you're going to translate it to the screen. 50% is the choice of the actors that you're going to find to actually convey what the characters want to say in there. 50% how you're going to light it, 50% the, the editing, 50% of that. And if you got one of these elements right, you just screwed 50% of your film. <laughs> uh, so the the uh, truly, it's it's the 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 vector of development, you know, finding a vector of development that you're that you're uh, collectively um, conscious of really allows an idea to actually to grow and to and and, and especially offers alternatives when you don't know how to how to proceed and many times you don't know how to proceed you you constantly um confronting walls you know and then and, and um the one way to solve them is is by trying to collectively find an answer i mean mm -hmm. in um central station many times we were physically so drawn that i i i thought that we weren't going to get to the end and Fernando Montenegro is forever young and, mm -hmm. and, and so brilliant and, and uh, would come and say what if uh, what if we transform this into that I mean it, it, she had an understanding of the whole film way beyond her character that mm -hmm. truly truly helped me uh, Gael and, and Gael Garcia Bernal in the motorcycle diaries there were times I said uh, that's that's the last part of the we will never be going to be able to mm -hmm. go further you he would get there and and always bring ideas that would allow would somehow nourish a rebirth of the film i think that's very very important for when you're shooting to find ways to um to have that sense of rebirth mm -hmm. um, gia Jeanquet actually uh, told me that he appears uh he does characters in his films after the 30th day. <laughs> he plays, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the film and say, why, why do you do that? Mm -hmm. And he says, because people are so bored after the 30th day that I want to bring something <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> mm -hmm. that can represent a new, a new but story. But he never so appears in front of the camera. He does. He does yes, him? yes. Mm -hmm. he, he plays a, a mafioso uh, in um, A Touch of Sin, which oh, is very, very I funny. Need to... in, um, yeah, I need to... Yeah, Reason. and, Reason. and there, he in that scene uh, where Sun Ming, his cousin, plays the minor, mm. he uh, is the the guy who is just just near the the, oh, the very the, the it attendant. Was it was so it, it is it him. Was, uh -huh. He's in. He does his Hitchcockian appearance in most right. of uh, of his films. It's just that. And he takes pleasure in it, but he mm -hmm. says that it's also to motivate. Uh, mm -hmm. So the the collectiveness of it is is really something um, fundamental, and I find it more and more difficult to to attain because again, there are so many distractions. You know, the the, the telephones, and uh, I remember when I started getting to sets, I would say. Um, please don't forget to read your newspapers, you mm -hmm. know, at lunch or da 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 da. da. Now I said, oh, please don't forget to put your cell phones on after we finish to mm -hmm. shoot. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. As a way to say, you know, mm -hmm. put them off. But mm -hmm. it's it's that is mm -hmm. not the easiest thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you really, and it's much getting back to your uh, question. If you have a a project that is not shared. It's just a small group, but it's shared by uh, a larger group of actors and um, and um, you know people who take part of the film. It's I find it much easier. Mm -hmm. So um, the projects I'm developing now are for Gael, for Fernando Montenegro, for, mm -hmm. for actors that I truly love to work with, and mm -hmm. I will probably be shooting them with you know the same crew that. Mm -hmm. um, I've been either shooting these films or this documentary. Right. A new DP worked with me on this. I, I 
really loved his work and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's quite the beauty of cinema is to be able to <laughs> extend things. Mm -hmm. you know? We have time for one last question. Yes, Adam? I was just wondering whether you know or sense um, that there might be any filmmakers that Zhejiang holds in the kind of high regard that you hold him in that might be working today. I just wonder if you know. If he yeah, has. Who does he who, I think that Hu Xiaoxian would be yeah. probably his... his Model. His choice, you know, as um, interestingly, they are both in uh, official competition in Cannes this year. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no, I don't. I, mm. don't I think that that's that's completely fine. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's somebody who's not stressed by that, it's really. How do you like Ho Xiaoxian? I'm sorry. How do you like Ho Xiaoxian? I like Hu Xiaoxian's films um, a lot. Uh, not, I don't know his work um, as thoroughly as I know Xia Jean Ke's work, but um, um, I would say that there's, some, there's always something that g grabs me. Not, I don't have that direct connection with, it's perhaps because the idea of, um, of um, Characters somehow mirroring an identity in, in transformation and um, all those forms of exile that abound in Gia Jean-Kay's films, either existential exile or um, economic social exile. I can I can somehow relate to that mm -hmm. uh, very directly. And in um, in the Hu Xiaoxian films, there. Are the the, element, the 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 equation is clearly a, a different one, and that I, can, I I truly admire it and respect it. I loved three times, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, I remember very well the um, the the beginning of uh, um, Mambo. Um, what's the name of that film? Um, Millennium Mambo. Millennium Mambo. That was the 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 there are things that are moments that are truly striking and uh, touch me deeply um, but I, I don't find the exact same mm -hmm. um, connection, connection mm -hmm. but I, I do admire the filmmaker mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that on that note uh, we should perhaps um, round up and Please, a big round of applause oh, to our so. dear guests. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank should, you. I should invite you and in all this crowd to all the film festivals we go to because it's you know, <laughs> <laughs> quite unique. Thank you so much for such a, a, an experience. Will stay with me for yeah. a long time. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Uh, obrigado.